allowed to share right now. Some of the folks, uh, um, I mean, I just want to, I, I feel like this is important because they're going to watch this later. I know they couldn't watch the entire stream, but a shout out to Northwest Fishkeeping that's over there on Discord for really being uh, a sleuth extraordinaire, uh, a Sherlock Holmes trying to put, put all the pieces together, finding the different animals. Uh, we are going to be putting out more and more information about what we have. But uh, just yesterday, we posted on our social media. So just a little over two weeks ago until the grand opening, the Modern Bear Aquarium has started to give out a lot more information since my last video on this topic, including some really key things I think should be noted. So that's where we are at this video. So in this video, I'm going to go over things such as the member preview dates, some new experiences that you'll see in Into the Deep, as well as some creatures that have been recently confirmed to be there for the grand opening. So let's get right into it. So first off, the most important thing I think to talk about are the member preview dates. And these were announced a little over a day ago, I believe. Uh, so, And they were also revealed in yesterday's live stream. Uh, the member preview dates will be April 2nd to April 5th. And then the grand opening to the public is April 9th. So if you remember, you get between a four and a seven day preview ahead of the rest of the public and i'm not entirely sure how these work because i've never been to one despite being a member just because i live quite far away and the timing doesn't exactly line up a lot of the time but i'm guessing if you show them your member card or your member id uh then they'll let you in but yeah so if you live in the area or maybe if the timing works out for you uh, you can go down between april 2nd and april 5th which is april 2nd is a saturday and april 5th is a tuesday so you'll get to see a preview of all the animals that will be on display and some other stuff in there as well that will be super exciting to see. And I'm not sure if you're allowed to record uh, videos, take photos. Um, I'm pretty sure they will let you, but you just can't kind of spoil anything, I guess. Um, but yeah, those are the member preview dates. So if you have time uh, to go there and check it out uh, for firsthand, then I highly suggest you do. So next, I want to talk about a few experiences that you'll see in Into the Deep and if you did watch the first clip, yep, that was me. Uh, Pat was giving me a shout out because in the Discord, I've become kind of a known detective of just kind of sorting out and looking for all this information in articles or pictures and stuff like that. So I really thank them a lot for the shout out. Um, and it's cool to hear that a lot of people at the Aquarium also like it too. So with that out of the way, two experiences that they recently talked about are specifically in the midwater zone and the seafloor zone so for the midwater zone they have talked about a bioluminescent experience which i believe uh she said it was a 360 degree uh screen or room that you can walk into and then it's completely dark but on the screen they just show uh they play uh, a bunch of videos containing different bioluminescence and you can kind of immerse yourself in that uh display of bioluminescence which i think is pretty cool um, and then the second thing they talked about is an isopod touch tank or a giant isopod touch tank. And this was spotted all the way back in the New York Times article from 2020. Uh, and this was also recently confirmed by Paul Clarkson on the Discord. Um, and you are going to be able to touch giant isopods. So this has been done at least one time um, in a Florida aquarium. Uh, but from what i've heard it wasn't really the best experience and that aquarium itself is not really that good um but from what paul talked about it sounds like the modern bay aquarium's giant isopod touch tank will be way better uh for both uh the humans and the animals uh so it's gonna be pretty exciting to see that um and i'm pretty sure that's in the seafloor zone considering those animals come from the seafloor um and i'm not sure if that's going to be the only display of giant isopods because they might put a few in the whale falls tank as they are known to scavenge on whale falls, but we're not really sure at this point in time um, as they have done a really good job at keeping a lot of stuff secret um, and we'll just have to wait until the official grand opening. So another point I'd really like to address here as we get into this next section is that there are going to be a momentum of scientific discoveries that will be made because of this exhibit. and. This is things like new behaviors, new species, and even new colors of bioluminescence, like something Paul talked about they may have discovered uh, because of these animals and being able to see them on display. Uh, but one really awesome thing Paul talked about is that, and some other staff um, in the NBA Discord server as well talked about, is that there are a lot of animals, especially in the midwater, 
uh, at the aquarium that do not have common or scientific names. So these animals are almost brand new to science as they are extremely understudied. Um, so they actually don't have any names. So there are a few animals which one I'll be able or a couple I'll talk about in uh, the next segment uh, that will have brand new common names that the aquarium has uh, had to give these animals because there would be no other way to kind of to find them. Um, and it seems like they're going to be naming a whole lot more. Um, and something really interesting Paul pointed out is that in their collection right now, so at the aquarium, and he said these will most likely be on display at some point or another, which I'm really hoping some of them will be on display uh, for the grand opening, is that they have some gelat a lot of gelatinous animals. So these are things like jellies, tinafores, siphonophores, stuff like that that are currently unnamed and brand new to science. So it'll be really interesting to see if those will be on display. Uh, and I'm really interested to see what those look like. But yeah, so not only will they be displaying animals that will be on display for the first time in the world, they'll also be displaying animals that will be a first time for science as well. So that's gonna be extremely exciting to see. So for animals that they have confirmed that will be on display for the grand opening, um, and you'll be able to see these on the member previews as well. And if I forget any, I'll put it on screen because there's actually quite a few that they've already confirmed uh, to be on display. But these include the Bloody Belly Comb Jelly, the Snow Globe Jelly, Giant Isopods, Brisingid Sea Stars, Japanese Giant Spider Crabs, Bone Eating Worms, Balloon Worms, Mauve Stingers, Lump Fish, Predatory Tunicates, Mushroom Soft Coral, the Red Sea Fans, multiple uh, different species of sea cucumber and uh, deep sea anemones, which I'll put the names of those on the screen, uh, the Glowing Sea Cucumber, Sea Angels, Basket Starfish, Salmon Snailfish, the Julie Packard Coral, Bubblegum Coral, Japanese uh, Armorhead Fish, and then a mystery Australian deep sea creature that Paul talked about going on display yesterday. Uh, and I think that's all the ones off the top of my head. Again, I'll have them on the screen for any that I missed, but I believe that is all of them that have been confirmed so far. So again, they haven't really spilled a lot of info yet uh, because as we get closer to the uh, opening day, I think they want to keep a lot of stuff a surprise. Um, but out of everything we know so far, it's pretty exciting. So. My personal favorites that I'm really excited to see are the Bloody Belly Comb Jelly, uh, the Snow Globe Jelly, which is, if you watched my last video, that is Moderia Rotunda, and I believe that's also a common name, uh, the Snow Globe Jelly, that the aquarium had to give Moderia Rotunda because it didn't have a common name before. Uh, predatory Tunicates, Sea Angels, and these Deep Sea Corals are all I'm also really excited to see because there's going to be quite a few different Deep Sea Coral uh, displays that'll be on uh, at the aquarium and the juvenile salmon snowfish as well i guess i'm also pretty excited to see uh, but i think what intrigues me the most is this deep sea australian creature that paul was talking about that a lot of us in discord tried to guess uh but he said that none of us are right uh so some guesses we were thinking about were the giant siphonophore um and and a species of blobfish that is only native to australia and new zealand uh now the giant siphonophore is my guess because even though they're not exclusive to Australia, the biggest one uh, or the longest one that solidified the giant siphonophore as the world's longest animal at 150 feet long uh, was recorded on Australia. So that was my guess. But Paul said neither of those were correct. So it's still uh, quite a big mystery as to what it could be. But paying attention to his wording, it sounds like it was only one animal. So uh, some new guests we have are the swimming sea cucumber the glass octopus, and then three other species of really small shark that could be going in the whale falls tank, um, such as the kite fin shark, the rough dogfish, and the, I believe it was called the black mouth lantern shark. Uh, so those are all species from Australia. Uh, they all stay around six feet and you can find them around 300 plus meters. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much our guesses. Uh, Paul hasn't uh, told us if any of those are correct. Uh, because he also said he can't confirm or deny anything, of course. Uh, so 
we'll just have to see if he does reveal it to us or not ahead of time uh, but it looks like we'll just have to wait until the exhibit opens of course to see what that is so one more important thing that i'd really like to point out is on the nba website if you scroll all the way down uh, on the deep sea habitats page specifically uh, and you see all these new uh, these species profiles on there uh, there's actually a glitch that someone um, on discord uh, vampire squid he discovered this somehow and i'm not sure how he discovered it but it has been really fantastic and a huge shout out to vampire squid as well uh, a lot of people give me credit uh, for finding a lot of stuff i have to give him a lot of credit as well for finding a lot of stuff that like like this glitch that i did not know as well as identifying a lot of creatures um that have uh that they showed in the muddy bottom tank and stuff like that uh that i never knew uh in the names of her that even existed uh so huge shout out to vampire squid as well so he discovered this glitch where if you refresh the page and you scroll down to the deep sea creatures uh section really fast you can see at least 30 new profiles uh of different species that they're starting to upload and um when you first hear about it, it's like oh that's interesting it's not like that means anything uh, because for some of the for i think a lot of the animals uh that have species profiles on the modern Bay aquarium website uh they're not actually at the aquarium uh like there's some shark species that aren't at the aquarium but they still have species profiles um it's just an education thing uh but a large majority of these species profiles are actually used uh to show off what's in the exhibits so i'll show a clip right now but for example if you go to the kelp force page you can see things like the california sheep head species profile the garibaldi sheep heads uh the garibaldi species profile the leopard shark species profile all these other species profiles that show what animals are actually in the displays so the reason i think that we should pay some attention to this is because this could actually be a hint uh, or provide some clues as to what animals will be at the grand opening or what animals they'll have on display in the future and this is actually how we discovered the Japanese armorhead fish is actually on display right now in the whale falls tank because if you look at the picture of the fish in the background you can see the head uh, part of the fabricated uh, whale skeleton they have in the whale falls tank and that's also another interesting thing to point out is that when you look at a lot of these pictures that contain the animal if you look in the background there's a lot of clues to what display they'll be in uh, so for example there was that Japanese armorhead I just talked about and then there's also this other picture that Pat showed on the first live stream with Paul Clarkson um, of a juvenile Japanese spider crab. And if you look in the back, that environment is a very similar to a concept they had that was shown in the New York Times article. No, not the New York Times article. Uh, the Travis Wood uh, art uh, concept uh, maker thing. Um, and th those two are basically identical. And I think that's a separate tank that they're going to have for juvenile Japanese spider crabs. And then once they grow to more of an adult size, they'll be moved to the whale falls tank. And that's just something that I saw. Um, but some other really interesting things to point out is that a lot of these species profiles are animals that, if you look at the New York Times article, um, seem like that the that they were thinking of having on display um, or that they did collect. So the most recent one that got uploaded yesterday is the wig roy jelly, which is a deep sea species of hydrozoan uh, belonging to the Lyria. Lir Lir Eoluria uh, genus is I think how you uh, pronounce it but that uh, specific picture was actually featured all the way back um, in the New York Times article uh, showing um, that picture under the midwater section of animals that they wanted to possibly have on display uh, and whether we'll see it or not I'm not 100% sure of course um, but it does look pretty awesome and maybe it'll make an appearance in the future. And one more thing I like to talk, uh, to talk about is the possibility of siphonophores actually being on display. Um, one correction I have to make from the last video is I mentioned the hula skirt siphonophore uh, being the siphonophore that they had cultured at the aquarium and have in the jelly lab right now. Um, I like to correct that as I don't know why I thought they said hula skirt, um, but the real name for that one is Nanomia bajuga, which is a species of siphonophore that is found in Monterey Bay. So. It is the Nomia that they currently have at the aquarium um, and the one that they have cultured, not the hula skirt. So I'm not sure where I got hula skirt from, uh, but that is one correction I'd like to make. But the reason I thought I'd like to talk about this is because there has been a lot of recent hints from the NBA staff, uh, specifically Pat and Mackenzie, 
uh, from yesterday's live stream that point to Siphonophores possibly being on display. Um, maybe not at the beginning, but possibly sometime in the future. And this is mainly because they were talking a lot about Siphonophores, um, specifically the Christmas tree Siphonophore. And they actually did collect one in the past, so I'm not sure how culturing that one has gone. Um, or if that one is even still at the aquarium uh, but one interesting sentence that Mackenzie said or a quote that she said not put on screen right now uh, from yesterday's live stream uh, points to possibly some siphon some more siphonophore work going on at the aquarium and hopefully we'll see uh, siphonophores on display at the grand opening um, which species I'm not really sure uh, most likely Nanomia just because that is the one they've cultured uh, but other ones that they have hinted to are the Christmas tree and the giant. So we'll, hopefully we'll see one of those on display, uh, but that's just kind of something I like to point out. So yeah, that's all the recent news that we have gotten uh, for the exhibit. Again, it's literally just two weeks and one more day of waiting until the exhibit finally opens to the public. And I'm just so ecstatic. Um, I'm gonna be at the aquarium the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. Uh, the 8th is to grab footage of the rest of the aquarium, the 9th is specifically for Into the Deep probably, and then the 10th is just to go back and reshoot and refilm a lot of stuff that I uh, decided that I need to refilm. So it's got to be an awesome time, um, and yeah, I hope to get a lot of good footage and photographs of these rarely seen animals. Um, and yeah, with that being it, my name is Northwest Fishkeeping, signing out.